Hi, we are now chatting with Donna Lynn Hilton, who is a line producer at Goodspeed Musicals in Connecticut. And, um, and Goodspeed has had a long, long history with musicals new and old and continues to innovate and create new programs. And I want to talk about all of that. Uh, but Donna Lynn, let's start first by talking about what, what is your position at, at Goodspeed Musicals and how do you get to play in the world of developing new musicals? Well, as you say, I am the Tweets Line producer, um, and in that position, I am uh, part of a team of people that um, determines what Good Speed is going to be producing both at the Opera House and at our Terrace Theater in Chester. Um, and then once those decisions are made, um, I'm the person who's responsible for making sure that they come out the way they're supposed to. Um, we also run the Writers Colony and a Festival of New Musicals and a lot of other development opportunities that are part of my portfolio. So kind of from soup to nuts, Goodspeed's artistic um, production is my responsibility. That's a lot of responsibility, Donna Lynn. Um, and I know. I'm going to go take a vacation now. <laughs> <laughs> I know that uh, it was it was a number of years ago that I was out there for uh, a, a NAMPT summit. And, yes. um, and I recall that you were in the middle of building a lot of, uh, of, 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 of um, housing for yes. visiting artists. And I know that it was part of the plan that when you weren't in production uh, with your regular season, that you were going to be using that space for residencies for uh, writers who were working on new musicals. And it seemed like you were right at the beginning of a burgeoning of all kinds of programming that you were going to be able to do simply yes. because of the real estate that you were able to offer. So I'd love for you to talk about how that's, ex how that's uh, worked out in terms of being able to bring more and more writers to work on their projects at, at, at good speed. So in 2012, 2013, we opened a, a new housing project that included, I think we ultimately built 17 buildings, um, houses and um, apartment buildings, apartments that um, would house, uh, we, we ultimately can house like 108 people on campus, I think is the number of beds we have. That's and incredible. when we, we, that housing project came about primarily in support of the producing that we do in our two theaters, um, that we do frequently need, we needed more bedrooms than we have and we're here in, in rural Connecticut and there's very little rental property available. So we initially broke ground on those because we needed housing for production. But right. we quickly realized that we're in production from March until right after Thanksgiving, somewhere between you know, Thanksgiving and early December each year. And, and the then you get then months, you get snowed in. And, and we get snowed in, yes. And so for, for almost three months of the year that housing was not being put to its full capacity. Mm -hmm. And what do we do with that? And so we developed very quickly the idea of a writer's colony. We went to the Johnny Mercer Foundation, who um, bought into the idea and agreed to fund um, the, 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 the test project. So we, we did the first, I think, in the winter of, we just finished our fifth, so in 13, I guess, we did the first Johnny Mercer Writers Colony at Good Speed Musicals. And that takes place in the kind of core of our housing project, right in the middle of our artist village. We have seven houses there that are dedicated to um, writers, and we bring them in for anywhere between one and four weeks, the last two weeks of January, first two weeks of February, and we essentially park the team in the house, and we give them a piano or a keyboard, um, we give them a printer, and, um, and we give them a dramaturg and a couple of other staff people to advise and participate and make sure that they have everything they need, and we just turn them loose to write. Um, and it was really kind of altruistic in its in its inception. Um, it has turned into, not surprisingly, but I think more quickly than we thought it would, a real a real the beginning of the pipeline for us, um, because we do we get the opportunity to be in the room with fourteen to twenty eight projects in a month, depending on you know what we're doing in any given year, in the room with those projects with those writers. Um, hearing their work, involving ourselves in their work, and getting to decide which projects are best for us, and also which writers are best suited for us continuing collaboration with. So that 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 housing project that initially began as a support for production is actually turning around on us completely, and is is the real. Um, Incubus That's work. fantastic. And when you talk about a pipeline, Donna, can you talk to us about the kind of, uh, of, of pipeline that can happen between, from like, because sometimes I'm sure you bring writers in who are just at the nascent stages of talking about an idea and don't even have anything on paper yet. But ultimately, you're also going to find projects through that that you're going to wind up producing uh, at, 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 at the yes. Terrace Theater. So 
Um, maybe you can talk about the different ways and, and even give us some specifics about, how, about different paths that projects have taken. Sure. sure. Um, so in the very first year of the colony, we hosted a project um, called Chasing Rainbows that was um, when they applied to us just an idea um, to turn the music of Judy Garland into a, um, into a, a full book musical. Um, and it sounded like a good idea, and we liked the people involved, so we said, "Sure, come on up." And, and we were we were um, it, we were fortunate enough to be naive at that at that point in the process. We go, "Oh, that sounds like fun. Let's just do it." Now we have a whole different process of of um, application that I can talk you through if that's interesting. But absolutely. Um, yeah. So um, and we hosted that team, and we got to know them a little bit, and we got to know the piece a little bit more and thought, oh, this is a great idea. Ended up producing it at the Opera House. Um, and there's several examples of pieces that have come to us either just as ideas or for, further, for something that had existed as a piece but was ready for further development that we have then taken through the various opportunities that we have here at Good Speed. Um, we operate the Norma Terrace Theater down in Chester, Connecticut, which is a 200-seat Lord D theater that has, for most of its about 38-year history now, been devoted primarily to the development of new musicals. So in many of those cases, those are emerging writers, um, people that the average theater goer may never have heard of, but that we have identified um, as as people that we want to nurture, nurturing those young writers is a is a piece of is a part of our mission statement. So we're lucky in that way, um, and so we have the opportunity to bring something into the colony as an idea, take it through the, the four week colony process. We can there's nothing to keep us from continuing you know from bringing something back to the colony for a second year. But when we feel that it's at the right stage, um, we have a festival of musicals that we um, produce each January, and we can take a piece into that festival for further development. Um, we can take a piece from the festival or directly to um, production at the Terrace, which is a, is a true developmental production. We um, don't allow critics at the Terrace. We don't welcome critics at the Terrace, I guess is the, the, <laughs> a more generous way to put it. Um, and so we will, as long as the creative team has work they want to accomplish on the piece, we will support that work. We will provide production support, the, the artistic support that Good Speak can provide, whatever they, as long as they have work they want to do on the piece, we will continue to support that piece. So for three and a half weeks of rehearsal, three and a half, four or five weeks of performance, we will continue to support that work. Um, we can also take shows to full production at the Opera House, um, which is a little bit less likely in a new musical situation um, for a variety of reasons. Um, but we have taken shows from the fest from, from the colony to production at the Opera House, Chasing Rainbows being the, the best example of that recently. Um, we've taken several projects into development at Chester. Um, Indian Joe, that um, Elizabeth Davis's piece that we produced in 2015, um, being an example of that. And then um, we actually have a piece in development right now um, that I, I can't say too much about, but we've actually, we met the writers because they were um, actually through a, a NAPT, um, a, through a NAPT colleague, I was introduced to a, a, a team of UK writers. Um, and they and just to clarify, uh, for those who don't know that are listening, NAMPT is the National Alliance for Musical yes. Theater, which is a service organization based out of New York that's very, very helpful in, in, in all of these pipeline scenarios. Yes, and connecting a lot of theaters and, and professionals across the country. Um, so through through NAMT, we met a, a director and producer in the UK who introduced us to a team. They had a new idea, something they had not begun to work on at all. Um, that sounded like a good idea. We loved their earlier work. They are young writers who um, have not had too much produced and certainly nothing uh, that has reached a first class commercial production. Um, and so we invited them to come in to the colony and they arrived really just with their idea. And the first night they were with us, the, the colony, we do a lot of um, writer to writer exchange. It's really a collegial program, writers talking to writers and we try to stay out of it as much as possible and just give them more structure so that they can work and learn from one another. Um, and so the first, but I am blessed to be able to 
sit in on it <laughs> and just watch what's happening. So the first um, night the, the writers came in and the composer said, so um, she, she set up this, she said, I have this idea, but I, I'm not sure what it sounds like. So I'm gonna just give you a lyric and I'm gonna play a little tune here. And if, when you feel it, you could repeat that lyric to that tune. And you, know, you can change the key, you can modulate in a lot of different ways, but if you could just react to what you're hearing. And so the room started and we had, you know, like 14 musical theater writers in the room and a couple of producers and, and, and people just started reacting and, and making sound to one another. And it was, in, in this, it was incredibly beautiful and incredibly emotional. And we listened to that for maybe a minute and a half with people just, just responding and making sound when they felt it. And, and then we stopped and she said, thank you, that's really helpful. Because it wow. a really beautiful noise had come out. Yeah, it, so, it sounds, sort of, it sounds sort of night, mystical, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the next night she came back with this absolutely beautiful song that is the opening number of a piece that, that we're hoping to continue development with at the colony this year and that the theater in the UK will take to developmental production and it will take full production by 2019, um, 19 or 20 probably. And so we have, we're really developing and growing that, that pipeline. But the That's path amazing. is really Colony, New Musicals Festival, production at either the Terrace or the Opera House, depending on the, the product. And, and if you have um, uh, pieces that come through a certain portion of that pipeline and then they don't necessarily feel right to go further, uh, I imagine you sometimes shepherd them. We were talking just earlier with uh, Michael Rubinoff from Sheridan, and he mentioned that the Come From Away team got to spend a little bit of time yes. at Goodspeed. Yes. The Come From Away team came to us in a, a years, I think it was 2013, but Michael Rubinoff had referred them to us, thought we might be interested in their work, and uh, we read, I read the first 45 pages of Come From Away, um, completely new and only the first 45 pages, and of course, responded to it as the rest of the theater world is able to now. Yes. Um, and invited them to participate in our festival. We didn't have the colony in place at that time, oh. but invited them to participate in the festival that year. Um, and that was, we really only had the first act when we committed to that. And so they continued to write. They arrived here for our festival. They continued to write. We had two complete acts when they presented at the festival, um, their festival presentation that year. And then we, we, because we sponsored the show for the National Alliance for Musical Theaters Festival and Musicals, where Junker Dog saw it and picked it up and moved it forward. But um, yeah, that we do, we do have the opportunity to nurture shows in a lot of ways that are not to full production or even into our festival. Um, because of all of our musical theater, the musical theater collaborations that Goodspeed has had access to for many, many, many years, we do have a lot of relationships. Relationships with people mm -hmm. like you, Michael Rubinoff, yeah. commercial producers, a lot of you know, other theaters in the country. And so we, I, I frequently say that's not right for us. But why don't we introduce you to the, because it seems like something they might be interested in or that their audience might be interested in or somebody needs a festival presentation in mind or they need a, a workshop presentation in mind my, my, all my slots are full so let's talk to our folks at our friends at the village theater, theater in issaquah because i know they have a festival maybe they have something palo alto you know so we do a lo lot of matchmaking from the projects that come through the, through the palo that's fantastic. Now you talked a moment ago about the submission process. Could you walk us through that? Yes. If I were if I were a member of a writing team and I had a show and I wanted to figure out how to get it to you guys, what would that process involve? Okay, so for the colony, um, because we don't really have, I mean, our staff is, we have me, we have our associate producer, Bob Allwine, we have an assistant, and um, that's really it in terms of people who are here to review material. So we don't have a just wide open um, solicitation process, but um, for the colony, you do have to be invited to submit. Mm -hmm. So you at least might know a team and say, you know, Don Allen and I, this team, they, and they have very specific need, I think the colony would help them a lot. And so we issue invitations to probably 100 writers to apply for the colony mm -hmm. here. Um, those are, they send us um, demos, um, bios, um, 
write an excerpt, but in many cases not called script because many of these pieces are, as you say, very nascent ideas. Right. Um, and then um, the Good, Good Speed staff and a representative of the Johnny Mercer Foundation review those materials um, and make the selections for the colony. We try hard with the colony not only to produce to develop work that we would be interested in producing, but to also make sure that we have a really diverse conversation in the house every night when the writers get together. So we try to have writers of color, writers of, um, of gender diversity, ethnic diversity, musical diversity in the pieces, storytelling diversity, so maybe telling stories in different ways. Um, you know, not all traditional musical theater approaches, maybe some idea that's not been tried before or something that we haven't seen a lot of. Um, definitely different musical styles. We try very hard to make sure that we have different musical styles. Um, that process has led us to have some really um, interesting, pe just interesting people in the room, just people who might not have found one another in a musical theater writing situation if they, if they weren't being drawn into the colony at the same time. So then once those people are identified, um, the real invitation to join the colony is, is um, offered. And then, um, as I say, they're with us for anywhere between one and four weeks. And we try hard, as you say, to continue to nurture those pieces, not to, to you know, once you're part of the Goodspeed family, you're part of the Goodspeed family. Um, and the colony has meant that I have a lot more children than I used to have. <laughs> But uh, it's great. You know, big families are fun. Right. So. And with that in mind, uh, do you do you find that you sometimes try to put uh, uh, different uh, members of your family together? Uh, th th because people might come to you as a team, but along the way, do you sometimes discover that you might want to pluck somebody from one place and sure. another and put them together and actually start a team or a project or sure. both? Sure. Um, that has happened. It's happened with varying degrees of success, honestly. Um, but what we what we really find where the matchmaking really it really works. It hasn't really paid off yet, I don't think. I'm racking my brain to make sure I'm not forgetting a project. So so far, I don't think it's really paid off in terms of, of putting writing teams together. Mm -hmm. um, but we, Ben Scheuer's musical, The Lion, which has played a lot of uh, regional theaters in the country, and, and I think people who are aware of musical development are, are pretty aware of it. Ben came to, um, to good speed through the program at Northwestern. John Mercer Foundation works with Northwestern um, on a, a songwriters program. And Ben came out of that into the colony at the recommendation of our friends at John Mercer. Um, and he came with a collection of songs, but he didn't really he didn't really have a show. And he, he knew he wanted it to be a show, but he didn't really know how to do that. And at the colony, he met the person who ended up directing the make it a show. Um, and that the first theater that gave them a workshop of that was also someone who saw a piece of the lion here at the colony and thought it would be great programming for them and they wanted to support it. So, so we've done a lot of that kind of indirect matchmaking. Um, we've had one marriage. Uh, we had two writers. <laughs> we had two writers meet at the colony working on different projects, fall in love, get married, and they just welcomed their first child. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so, and it, we do a lot of, um, I'm sure if I, I'm just blanking on, on you know, that kind of, the matchmaking that takes place outside of the mm -hmm. colony. You know, that somebody would say, I'm looking for a book writer, and I'll go, oh, I know the person, because I meet them at the colony. It's a blessing, because to have, to, you know, we all spend a lot of time reading scripts, meeting writers, going to readings, you know, working hard to stay out in that world of new music musical theater development to find out what's going on. It's so wonderful that we have this tool that will allow us to bring so many writers right here into our um, orbit in the middle of the winter. Yeah, and it's fantastic that you are, you're able to nurture works without necessarily worrying about whether they are going to be right for you to produce. Yes. Uh, but it, when you are looking for something, when you're keeping an eye out for something that you might want to produce and move forward, um, are, are there particular things that you look for in, in the show uh, uh, that, that would, that would uh, make it more likely to be something that you would, that in terms of well, themes, ideas, storylines? I mean, I, I think I'm, a, I'm fortunate in that Goodspeed produces only musical theater. 
Mm-hmm. I don't have to. I don't only have two musical slots a year that I have opportunities for. Some of our other friends who produce new musicals do plays, and their budgets have to reflect that. Um, we produce only musicals. Mm-hmm. Um, my my first um, measure is is programmatic, of course. You know, is it something that is right for our audience? I'm fortunate in that we have two theaters who have very different um, DNA in terms of, of what we produce. The Opera House is your big, happy song and dance. You know, that's where we develop Holiday Inn for the Opera House. We never would have put it on the on the Chester stage. Um, and and the, the Chester Theater, the Norma Terrace Theater, has um, a, a footprint that is a little bit, much more actually, much more um, forward leaning, much more progressive, um, much, um, more receptive of different musical styles, of different styles of storytelling, um, because we do, because they are developmental productions, we do work hard to push down production costs, and so just just expectation is is different, and we can challenge our audience um, in in more aggressive ways. But that certainly that certainly means that having those two very diverse audiences does give you the opportunity to develop lots of different works that many theaters yes. would have to pick one or the other and not be able to right. go forward with so many different kinds of work. So that's really yeah. wonderful. Well, and I think I think that the same year that, that we met Chasing Rainbows at the Colony, we met Indian Joe at the Colony. And anyone who might have any knowledge of those two pieces would understand that they are very, very different. Very different. And uh, we, we came out of the same colony saying, here are two pieces and here are different tracks for them. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, of course, we're looking for people that we want to be in the room with. You know, we go, you and I go to a lot of conferences together <laughs> and we say it all the time. You know, it's all about making sure that you're in the room with people you want to spend time with. And so um, the colony does give us the opportunity to really examine that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, the, the issue of managing budgets so that the productions are things that we know we can actually produce, that we can afford to produce, that we have the manpower and the expertise and the skill to produce. Fantastic. Um, well, so well, that, that segues a bit into the uh, a question we've been asking everybody that we've been interviewing is a sort of a fantasy world question. If you were to wake up tomorrow morning and suddenly uh, Goodspeed Musicals was gifted with a hundred million dollars to put yeah. towards the development of new musicals, how would you want to go about spending that money if it were up to you? Um, I would want a, a great deal more literary strength in our organization. Um, we don't have a literary manager. We don't have a resident dramaturg. Um, those are two things that just have never been part of our DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because we come from um, the entertainment, you know, it feels like our, our, our bread and butter was the, the entertainment piece of it, you know, the, the big flashy song and dance musical. Mm-hmm. Um, and while those are not easy to develop, I think people approach them differently than they do something that may have a historical background significance or so we i would want a literary department um chock full of great dramaturgs and 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 people with diverse experience and diverse backgrounds and and people of you know just just a whole you know a potpourri of ideas that we could let percolate and that we could um, allow to infiltrate all these projects that we have access to. That sounds fantastic. If you ever get the money, Donalyn, uh, do contact me because as a dramaturg, I'd love to spend more time in, in beautiful yeah. East Haddam. <laughs> um, uh, to, to wrap things up, Donna, I would love it if you would talk to us a little bit about uh, perhaps what you see as the future of musical theater and what advice you would give to musical theater writers who are, who are starting out right now to write the musicals of tomorrow. Right. You know, I really, what do I say? I don't know what the future is. You know, just about time you think that, okay, this is the way it's going to go, then somebody gives you something new that you never could have anticipated. You know, I'm so impressed with the Broadway season this year because they're, the projects are so diverse, they're so exciting. So many of them are from writers that most people had never heard of before. Um, and that's incredibly exciting. And so I, I think I hope that 
that that is where the industry is moving and that we're going to continue to, to percolate and that we're all going to hear a lot of interesting, diverse voices in the coming years. I also love classic musical theater. And so I hope that we're, we're still, I hope we're still able to write those things and develop those things. I hope that we can still create Oklahoma's and, and things like that, you know, because there's, I think there, I hope there will always be an audience for them. I love them, but I also love to have to lean in and think a little bit more as a theater goer. To writers, I would, I, I believe very, writers have to write what they want to write, you know, they, they can't write what they're told to write. And I, I, I'm fortunate to work for a nonprofit. I don't, I can, I can produce what writers want to write. I don't have to produce commercially something that I know is going to deliver back to my investors. But I think that I have to believe that as long as writers are writing what they're believing in and, and I share that vision with them, we're all going to succeed. And so my advice to writers is write what you write. I hear a lot of writers say, oh, I have to write a four person musical. Please don't only write four person musicals. You know, I, I want to see a big joyous musical still. Um, so please, if you, if you have one in you, and you feel the joy of it, go ahead and write it because I think that you will find someone to produce it. And I think that we as producers and, and we as the institutions that are developing and presenting that work have to support the gamut of, of those ideas. Right. Well, that's, those are all great thoughts, Donna Lynn. Thank you so much. It's been great talking to you and hearing about all of the wonderful programs out there in Connecticut at Goodspeed Musicals. And we wish you all the best of luck as you continue to pursue the wonderful world of developing new musicals. Thanks for talking with us today. Thanks, Elise. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye.